All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Check out Pig and a Pickle, two locations, Emeryville and Corda Madera. They're open seven days a week in Marin, Wednesday through Sunday in Corda, or in Emeryville. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Well, we've now had the 49er minicamp, the OTAs, the draft, the free agent period, and they're basically just done until they show up in training camp ready to roll. We do expect that Nick Bosa will get a new contract uh, the first day that he shows up. And the 49ers, I would say, are 99.9% complete as far as putting together their roster for the upcoming year. But do they have one more need? And what is the final piece to the puzzle? And I'll tell you, I really think that veteran edge rusher piece is the final piece to the puzzle. Now, some good news on that front, good news and bad news, right? There's a couple of premier edge guys that were free agents last week that this week are no longer free agents. That's bad news, obviously, because the Niners can't sign them and they signed elsewhere. But the one thing that did come up this week is the price tag that these rushers got um, may indicate that the 49ers won't need to spend the kind of money that maybe we thought they would have to spend to add this final piece to the puzzle. So if you say to me, what is the final piece to the puzzle this year for the 49ers in their pursuit of a Super Bowl? I would say it's an edge rusher, a veteran edge rusher to go opposite Nick Bosa, uh, to, to go in a rotation with Drake Jackson and Cleveland Farrell and Austin Bryant and anybody else the Niners have. And according to Field Yates from ESPN, Leonard Floyd, who just signed with the Buffalo Bills, his deal has a base salary of $1.165 million, um, all of which is guaranteed. Plus, he's owed a signing bonus of $5.835 million. So we're not talking about $10 million. We're talking about, you know, 5 or $6 million for Leonard Floyd, who's a pretty good player. Um, very, very productive player the last three years. Now, Frank Clark signed with the Denver Broncos. It was a one-year deal for up to $7.5 million. The deal includes $5.5 million guaranteed base, $1 million in makeable incentives, and another challenging million dollars in incentives. So once again, I mean, Frank Clark, who was a top-tier edge rusher with a great resume, $5.5 million guaranteed. So we're not talking about $10 million. And that was the thought that maybe the, the, the veteran edge rushers might get closer to 10. Well, you know, now you're looking at a market that still has Justin Houston. I believe Jason Pierre, Paul, Melvin Ingram. Um, there's some guys out there. And one of them is Yannick Nagakwe. And I think Nagakwe might be the perfect free agent for the 49ers. He said this week that he is really, really hungry to play for a contender. He's hungry to win a Super Bowl. He wants to sign with a contending team if possible. This guy's had really, really good numbers, and he's been one of the best, most consistent edge rushers in the NFL over the last four seasons. 21 career force fumbles. See, when you look at that, you're thinking, man, that's D Ford territory. You know, the biggest play a def defender can make is, is the sack strip fumble. And that's what D Ford was so good at before injuries took, robbed him of his late career production. And that's what Nagakwe is good at as well. 21 career force fumbles. What I also love is he's played 110 career games in the NFL. He's got 135 quarterback hits. This guy sat, this guy hits the quarterback every game he's in. He's got 65 career sacks in 110 games. Look at his production over the last four years. This, you know, 2019, eight sacks, 15 hits on the QB for Nagakwe. 2020, eight more sacks, 11 hits on the QB. 2021, 10 sacks, 23 hits on the quarterback in the 2021 season. And then he followed it up last year with nine and a half sacks and 16 more hits on the quarterback. This guy has this guy sacks the quarterback and he does it every year. Um, he's not strong against the run, but who cares? He's in the wide nine. You got Fred Warner, you got Dre Greenlaw, you got all kinds of guys who can play the run. You don't need this guy to play the run. You need this guy to get up the field and sack the quarterback and 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 you know take advantage of being you know singled 
because Bosa's being doubled and Hargrave's being doubled or Armstead's being doubled. Whoever's playing in this spot, you know, not only is should Nagakwe want to play with the Niners because they're the favorite in the NFC to go to the Super Bowl and he's hungry to win a Super Bowl, but he also should come here because this is where his job's going to be easiest. You play outside opposite Nick Bosa, the reigning defensive player of the year, arguably the most destructive single uh, defensive force in the league, and you play on a line that has Armstead and Hargrave pushing the pocket and forcing the quarterback out the side door. If Nagakwe just stays healthy, he's going to run into 12 sacks. I mean, if you look at the sack production he's had on the teams he's been on, you get on a 49er team with a big second half lead in, you know, 75% of the games and your nine sacks, 10 sacks is going to go up to 12, 13, 14 sacks. So Yannick Nagakwe, in my opinion, is the final piece to the puzzle. And if it's not Nagakwe, it's probably one of those, those defensive ends from the Washington commanders. Uh, Albert Breer reported this week that the commanders are open to taking trade calls on their defensive ends, Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Sweat's a free agent at the end of the year, and so's Young. Young, uh, they, the, the commanders did not pick up Chase Young's fifth-year option. He's had some injury problems. If the Niners felt like he's the same player that he was pre-injury, you go for Chase Young. Reunite the Buckeyes' defensive ends. Both on one end, Chase Young on the other side. Uh, they could wreak havoc and lead the Niners to the Super Bowl. This isn't just another move, by the way. This could be the move. This is the final piece to the puzzle. This is the move that gets you over the top. And when you're looking at, at uh, you know, you got Martin Mayhew, I believe, in Washington. He's got the relationship with with Lynch dating back to their days with the 49ers. So you got maybe a little bit of an in general manager wise. And then next year you have all your picks and you got three or four compensatory picks. So you have a one, you have a two, you have a three, and you got, I believe, three compensatory picks. So the Niners are loaded already. They have one of the deepest rosters in football. Um, and they're loaded with compensatory picks in next year's draft. I got no problem trading a couple picks for Montez Sweat. I got no problem trading a couple picks for Chase Young. In my mind, Montez Sweat or Chase Young from the Commanders would be adding absolutely a, a difference maker opposite Nick Bosa and the kind of player that gets you over the top, the kind of player that, that helps you win the Super Bowl. So that's the way I see it. Niners are loaded at linebacker, super deep incredibly deep. They're going to wind up cutting a good linebacker. Now with the addition of Wilkes, I think they're deeper in the secondary and better. Um, and there's going to be some hard cuts in the secondary. You look at them on the offensive side of the ball, they're deep at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. Um, really there's two spots on this football team that they got to be concerned about offensive tackle. If Colton McKivitz can't do it, and there's a lot of confidence that he can, um, and in the edge rusher spot opposite Nick Bosa, where Abukam and Willis and um, Amenahue all left, and that's about 700 snaps walking out the door. The Niners have Drake Jackson. I think Jackson's going to have a big year. And there's no question that, you know, they've got some depth there. But if they could add one more piece um, to the puzzle, I think it's going to be the difference between uh, winning that Super Bowl in Vegas or or maybe losing it or not making it at all. And I would stay away from the lesser guys and go sh start shopping off the top shelf. Yannick Nagakwe is the best edge rusher in free agency. Justin Houston's not bad either, but he's more veteran, long in the tooth. And then Montez Sweat and Chase Young, it sounds like, according to Albert Breer, they're available. You add a Montez Sweat and he and to, to this line, I think you win the Super Bowl. You add Chase Young and his knee's all right, I think you win the Super Bowl. Uh, you add Yannick Nagakwe opposite Nick Bosa, I think you win the Super Bowl. So, you know, what are the Niners going to do? They might not do anything. They might just stay with what they've got. They've got $9 million on the cap room on, on the cap right now. They're going to get more uh, when Bosa's deal is renegotiated or, or his new extension is signed. They'll get some more cap relief. I know they want to roll over a sizable amount for next year just to cover themselves on next year. Um, but you know what? 
this is go time. This is when your window is open. You got a full fledged a group of draft picks next year. Um, you could trade off of that surplus. You've got some freed up money that you could potentially uh, make something happen here. You get an edge rusher like Montez Sweat or not Yannick Nagakwe or Chase Young, and he's healthy. Uh, the 49ers are going to win it all. All right. Hope you enjoyed our 49er video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show. And thanks to all of you for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.